Introduce yourself. Hi everyone, Mike Parenti. I'm an animator, freelance animator. Very enthusiastic about your talk. <laughs> I am. Uh, yeah. Part of the Fox Sport, Detroit. Oh yeah. Uh, and I'm going to be going over some fun little uh, shape layer things you can do in After Effects to speed up uh, and animate complex scenes. So I'm going to be talking about this. Uh, job I did at Gunner called Secret, it was for the bank, Secret Bank. Um, I'm just going to play it first and then I'll dive into it. Put it into the, bank. the future. That big unknown. That happens right after now. And now. And, well, now. Nobody knows what's going to happen, but you have some big plans for it. It could look like this, or this, or even this. Can you imagine? Yep, because you already have. And we think all those things should happen. That's why we're making savings simple. With consistently great interest rates, a seamless mobile banking app, and excellent customer service, we give you the tools to build your future, however way you see it. Synchrony Bank. Banking in sync with you. So I'm going to be going over this crazy first couple scenes. Uh, this our collection of shapes and stuff. So uh, we had, these, these were all illustrated by James Miller, and then we kind of like turned them into like uh, vectory uh, shapes in Illustrator. So here it is. Oops. So we basically started with these like crazy uh, Illustrator comps. So what we did is brought the, oh, we have one. Okay, I can show this. Uh, one second. And then we had all the doors. Okay. Uh, that's not it. Oops. So we took these illustrations and we, we vectorized them all in Illustrator and then uh, so what we tried doing the first couple of times we tried animating these scenes is like setting them up with like pretty complicated like paths to nulls, rigs, and there was like a bazillion nulls and like it was so chuggy and slow. Um, and we were having a lot of trouble animating it, and then we, just, then we figured, why don't we just export them directly out of the Illustrator with Overlord and just do path animation. So um, all of these shapes you see, they're on one shape layer. Uh, properly titled all of the shapes, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so adding everything to, to one shape layer rather than having them all broken out into like a billion different layers and like having uh, null rigs and everything, it makes it a lot easier to like select multiple shapes at once. So like if I want to animate these, I think I have set up like just okay. So like if I want to animate like this whole row of shapes, so I use the computer to at least probably do this. Oh wait. I'm just trying to hold Okay, never mind. I think I'm good. So if you want to like click and like drag like a bunch of shapes you can do this pretty quickly and easily. I edit Everything on um, shape layer. This point. Yeah, that's yeah. It's wacky. So like, this is maybe not the best example, but like, pretty quickly, I, like, I have two things animating, like, super easily, quickly, just because I keyframed every path that you see in this whole menagerie, and then drag them, and then boom, there we go, off the races. But that's all one shape layer. Right? That's all one one shape layer. And then another one we did this scene was built with masks, which is even cooler because the one issue with building everything on shape layers is that you can't lock layers within a single shape layer, which makes it kind of hard. So what I would do is, like the way I actually approach this is just like by turning stuff off, if it overlapped, and like animating like a thing at a time or, or like one row at a time, and then going from there. But if you build everything with masks, mask shapes have the ability to lock things so you can like even easier just like click and drag and like select a certain shape uh, click and drag shapes even if they're overlapping like move them around and do crazy stuff with them I don't know if this is helping anyone <laughs> uh, or if this makes any sense but yeah I mean basically the, the, the I guess moral of the story here is like Set things up the easiest way 
don't think that you, just because something looks complex, you need to like do some crazy complex rig. Like just just set things up in the quickest and easiest way possible, I guess. So, oh, I didn't actually show the overload thing. So I guess I'll talk about Overlord too. Overlord is sweet. So Over Overlord is a plugin that you put in Illustrator and After Effects, and it allows you to like port shapes directly from Illustrator to After Effects without like saving out the AI and like converting things to shapes and stuff. So uh, for example, I do have Overlord installed. Yeah, I know. Oh. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> so you can stuck this button. Yeah, you can just like build it all out. So this is that's all we did. And then now everything's on one shape layer. And you can click and drag. Once you keep it everything, you can click and drag your arrow content. And like get all this crazy, warpy, wacky animation that you see here. The future. Yeah. So like we there was like two or three days, like I don't know, maybe not that long, but like a couple days spent like trying to do this like what? I didn't actually have No, never mind. Three days spent. There was like a couple days spent like trying to do it in this like crazy rigged fashion and like we just did this shape thing and I'm like we had to animate in like a day. So it was kind of crazy. So that's that. And then I'm gonna talk about this thing, which is also entirely built with one shape layer. This hotel is all in one layer. And I kind of did this, uh, did this a while ago. I did this kind of just for fun. But there is some benefit to building stuff all in shape layers. This is built with like a lot of repeaters, which are um, basically like if you're a 3D person, it's like a cloner for After Effects, I guess is a good explanation. So this is built with like a lot of, once I get rid of all these, this is built with like a lot of cloned uh, repeated shapes. So it's actually, uh, kind of a quick way to work, and like everything's all in one shape layer, so it's super tidy. If you ever have to hand anything over, I guess it's maybe a good way to do it, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, I labeled everything, so if anybody ever needed this, they can tell what it was. I don't know, shape layers are cool. Um, well, to, to select multiple paths, you had the shape layers have to be in one shape layer, right? You can't right. select. Can't select paths from different shape layers together. Right, but this is not really. And that's the key, right? Yes, that is that is the key for this stuff. But that's it's doing this morphing shape. Yeah. So yeah, I guess if you need to morph multiple paths, setting them on one shape layer is yeah. super key because if these were all separate layers, you wouldn't be able to do this. And this is like everybody's doing animation like this, and so this is a good skill to have <clears throat> if you're trying to get better at After Effects. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you for bringing it on because I don't know what I'm doing. Quit no, no, I'm serious. You know I'm serious. Right? Thank you, actually. Um, well, I noticed like, like, you're up there. You're, like, not, you're an animator, not a speaker. We get exactly. That is no, as are all of us, basically. I am not good at words. Uh, so, yeah, no. Um, questions? Anybody have any questions? <laughs> Interact. Yeah. And then, like, you see, is Overlord free to download or open source or anything? No, it's the yeah. Box, I think. Best 40 bucks you'll ever spend. Yeah, it's like, I, <laughs> totally I, it. I don't know what I do without it now. It's like, it speeds it up like so fast. Especially if you're gonna do a bunch of path animation, uh, like in these, like, before you'd have to save the Illustrator out, import it after effects, the, get everything out, and then explode all the layers, and then it's all massive. Split it, and bring it back together, etc. But yeah, this will, like, directly, you go right from Overlord, bring it in, it'll yeah. be in the same exact position. Yeah. And it can even kind of, it was like five seconds. Yeah. And it's even kind of that. There's some interesting uh, settings yeah. like you can set everything so like they're on they're parametric, which is cool. So like if you have like a cube, it'll come up and come in as a parametric shape rather than path data. Or you can also set them to be on separate layers if you do want things on separate layers. So you can like do that and then now every shape will be on a different layer. So if that's better for you, um, I've done I do it both ways. Depending on what the purpose is. Is it renaming them here? The layer? There is, it is, it's just like naming them generic layer names. I know there is a way to do it. I've done it before where like, they can actually come in with names. I don't remember how. I think you have to like set it up a certain way. You have to name them in Illustrator? Probably that's it. Did, that. no. Did you not name your shapes in Illustrator? 
Uh, no. <laughs> no definitely, <laughs> definitely did not. This is all just like, yeah, just a bunch of rectangles. I think if you put everything on like separate layers and name these, I think it'll come in name. I'm pretty sure. I think I've done that in the past. Um, Yeah, okay, this is, see all these nulls, like this is kind of how the other two scenes were originally set up, uh, which path to nulls, like for something like this, where there's a bunch of like gridded boxes, it's like a cool, pretty like, good way to animate, but it takes forever to set up, and it's like, if somebody else jumps into this, they're like, how the hell do I, what even is this? Like there's so many nulls everywhere, and there's like five trillion layers in the stack, so that's, just having it all in one layer is like pretty cool. Painting. Yeah. So you find that whether or not you're painting on your file, and that will impact how you build. Oh yeah. Build the same. Yeah, because I mean, for speed sake, sometimes being messy is better. But like, if I know I'm going to be working with somebody, I'm going to like, especially like, either I'm going to work in it or build stuff in specifically in a way that's organized, or I'm at least going to like go organize it before I can give it to them. Because like. Giving somebody an organized file that takes like an hour or two for you to organize is still going to be faster than them like taking all day to like just try and figure out what the hell's going on. Okay. You know? So I guess preferably work build in a way that's organized, but it's not always the case. Yeah. 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 Mac and yeah. yeah. Right. Someday maybe. Yeah. How do you get your Mac colors? I like. Did you like? Did you like? Did you find? Did you find out? Well, I'm sorry. Oh, I was I was oh I, didn't, I didn't do any of the illustrations. It's all James Noller, and he's a genius. So that's how I found him. He's a genius. I don't know. Like I, I wasn't part of that part of the project. So. Uh, so you were supplied with the original artwork. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, was it something that was in their bank or part of their? Uh, they had. It was kind of. They had a hiccup to part of color palette, but. Uh, Philip James and Nick, who was a creative director on this thing, she, they worked and like created this like beautiful color palette for this. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, I guess as far as the way I find colors, uh, I don't even have a good answer for that. So let's just stick with that. <laughs> <laughs> so you did this for an agency? Yeah, I worked at a studio. Uh, yeah, so, okay. Yeah, or it was already established probably by the agency. Yeah, 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 cool. Yeah, and it, it was at a studio and they were working with an agency. There was a lot of like, back and forth. That's for Local Lord super helpful because often we get artwork given to us made by people who don't do motion, so they don't know how we want it set up. So, they didn't build it that way. Was it digital or was it? This was, I mean, this was designed. Like, what? You know, the, the original artwork was it? No, the original artwork was all just you know, like purely illustrated, so we oh, had to go so over that. Art. Art. Yeah, we had to go over that artwork and like vector it out. Um, and like the, the vector, uh, I, wish, I wish I had my drop box so I could show you, but um, I mean, it looked roughly like this. It was just like there was some, some interpretation to be had with like uh, taking the original artwork, but um, overall, it was pretty much tracing it over in the illustrator, making everything clean shapes. Anybody else? Scott, you have a question? Uh, yeah, I guess I don't usually work that way, where it's just like the one shape layer and then Channel. everything inside of it. Yeah. Is it just as easy as going into the search bar and go to path to bring up all the paths of the individual shapes? Or <coughs> like, how do you go about like navigating each individual shape inside of the shape layer? I think this, <laughs> even though even though doing it, on, I kind of just did this, maybe it wasn't even a good thing to show, because I kind of just did this just to see if I could. But for this stuff, like the benefit of having it all in one shape layer is because you can select everything at once. Like with, with multiple shapes, if separate shape layers, you can't do that. Right. I mean, you can't like select like, path in one shape. Like, shape. But like, if you wanted to animate the path on like that blue triangle specifically. Yeah. Like how how would I do that? How do you have to? Right. Yeah. So okay. All right. Thank you for organizing this better, Scott. That's a good question. So like, when everything's on shape layers, I would just like I'd have to just go through and turn stuff off and overlap, which is kind of like it's kind of annoying. 
uh, but it worked out well. The other way to build this, which is maybe even better, I can't exactly remember how I did it because he built this one, is building stuff with mask pads uh, and then doing fills on the mask. Because this way you can like lock the stuff, just like you can lock layers, which is pretty tight. And I wish they would add this to shape layers, like why you can't lock shape, to lock shape layers beyond me. But like here, like if you want to animate the triangle, is that the new name? No, it's not name. Uh, Trust me that you could like, just like lock everything else and just select the, the triangle if you wanted to, which is super cool. Okay. So, I think what he did is, he just, oh, we copied the right now, that's right. Okay, so he's like, control C, and then I think we go and do a path. That's a path. And then face shape. Hold up. Let's do it. Maybe this will be helpful. To see. I'm doing it right. So if you copy a shape in Illustrator, go shape layer, paste. Yeah, paste the shape in. So you could also do this mask on a solid. This, this would be a way to build it. So it makes the mess of that. Yeah. And then you can do, then you can add a fill or a pass. Is that here? Pass. Oh, left. Left <laughs> down, left up right there. Yeah, six foot. Four times. Four times. So then you can like add a bunch of different fills in. No, and you can. Uh, you can select which mask to choose which fill. So like this is some a way you can build like this thing. With that, like, and then you can lock each individual layer which is cool. So this is maybe even better than building on which layers building in with mask paths and using fills. That's it, I think. That's so good. Yeah, I just have another question. Is a, <laughs> it see like in the final version of the animation that's been released, you add a texture as well. Yeah. I am curious. How did you add texture though? I am curious. Yeah, actually, I can show you that. Um, the texture is all done with uh, dissolves. It dissolves running mode. Um, the hell did you just do? Oh, shit. No, you turned it off. I didn't have I thought it was there. Oh, yeah, it was there. Okay. So, um, yellow gradient down here. So dissolve is blending mode. It was they were all just normal gradients and you just turn on dissolve and you get that cool texture. So uh, these these uh, like dissolve layers were also masked with uh, mask the original shapes. And I, I just like parent paths. Uh, you can tie one path to another. I guess I can show you that too. Um, Let's do, let's do this demonstration now. I'll show you guys this. Live After Effects. Live After Effects. After Effects After. Woo! Oh. I'm going to do a little gradient. Okay. Sick. Woo! This one is a sick. And then we can play it as like. I just duplicate the layer, right? If, if something's got a bunch of masks pass on it, I'm going to duplicate the layer, delete everything with the one mask I want to like use as my mat, and then you can just alt click and pick it up to this shape so that you only have to control this or only mask it first. Alpha mat. Um, then you can control this one, and it also controls the mask layer. Or the yeah, mask layer. So that's how we mask those textures. Oh. Anybody else? Oh. Ta -da. Ta -da. Ta -da. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Good question. Um, there is a script called um, Shape Layer Navigator that will go through each, just like you can navigate the layers, like with um, Control and Down. Uh, there's Shape Layer Navigator that will go through each path in your Shape Layer. Or it'll select all paths, just with some buttons. 
Check it out, AE Scripts, Shape Layer Navigator. Hi, I'm Philip McCluskey. Uh, I've been with Vector Form for about yeah. almost four months. <laughs> uh, originally, for the last 10 years, I've been working as a forensic animator in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, so it's a little bit of a change of pace for me. Uh, I elected to do the MoGraph ba uh, banner uh, for November of 2019. Uh, that, around that time, Quixel had been purchased by Epic. Uh, and I had been wanting to dive into the Quixel uh, asset library, but I could never justify the cost of getting a membership because they had a point system. It was tough to, to get in there. Anyway, so it's free, 10,000 assets plus, um, free to use within the Unreal Engine. Uh, so this is the banner that I made using uh, Quixel uh, environment sets, and the MoGraph Monday is a uh, just a quick substance painter, uh, a couple of materials on there. So I'll just uh, play the uh, video animation that I had quickly done up in Unreal, if it wants to load. <clears throat> So uh, that is Quixel and Unreal Engine. Uh, just if uh, has anybody used Quixel and Unreal? Show of hands, a couple. Okay. Uh, so basically, Quixel is just a uh, photo scan library, uh, textures, assets, uh, and they have a thing called uh, Atlas, which is uh, smaller assets. Um, uh, real time. Uh, so I'm hired at Vectorform as a real-time 3D artist. Now, why would you want to do real-time? Well, uh, on the pro side, you get instant results, sort of. Uh, for that animation, uh, I had to do a light bake on that. So in Unreal, you have to do light bakes, which is baking down your lights onto the assets. Um, and that cannot be adjusted once you've baked your light. But what you can do is you can move that camera around and reanimate it once you've baked your lights. So what it allows you to do is build out in a room and an asset and then start to look at it from different angles and be able to iterate on that quickly. Uh, so on the pro side you also get your ideas out faster. I was able to build that entire scene in an afternoon, about six, eight hours, just using the Quixel assets. Uh, they have, and you know, It's easy to get huge resolution renders quickly, within seconds, and I can, I'll dive in that in a little bit uh, later. Uh, with Quixel added now, you have now 10,000 free assets. Also, uh, Epic uh, does monthly free assets. So they add six to eight free assets that have been made by the community free for anybody to download. Um, I believe it's the future direction of 3D animation motion graphics is real time. Uh, sitting around and waiting for a render is a nightmare. Uh, I've been in 3D for about 15 years now, and the thing I hate the most is sitting around waiting for my render to finish. Um, and then, like I said earlier, you can quickly get different camera angles up quickly. On the con side of that, there's an initial setup cost, which is costly. It can take a while to create 3D8 models for real time. There's a certain pipeline uh, that you need to stick to as far as the way things are built and structured. Um, and, and it is a new pipeline. Fidelity is not as refined, and it can be limiting as uh, you're limited on resolution on certain aspects, and you can't really adjust everything as much as you wish you could. <clears throat> uh, my initial idea is for this banner, uh, so I'm from Cleveland, I'm currently kind of living down in Monroe, Michigan, Toledo, and I'm commuting up to Detroit for, to work with Vectorform. So I'm driving through a lot of industrial style buildings, um, and so when I decided to jump into this, my thought process was kind of influenced by what I'm seeing on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis. Uh, coming up to I-75 into Detroit and seeing a lot of uh, warehouses and such. Uh, so my idea with this was kind of Phoenix rising from the ashes, new rebirth of, you have an old warehouse and it's starting to get, it was purchased or something and it's starting to get cleaned up and used for something. And I'm kind of reflecting on that in my own life with a new job, new career path, and what have you. Um, so 
what I talked about earlier about huge resolutions quickly, this is an 8,000 by 4,500 resolution image that I created in about 10 seconds that allows you to zoom in to the same image with that. Uh, you get a little bit of compression here with uh, PowerPoint, but you get the general idea that you can create a large asset very, very quickly through Unreal. Now, like I said, it did have a light bake on this, which was about eight hours, which um, I did the night before. But now you can go in here and you can render out these large resolution images quickly. You can move the camera around wherever you want. In some ob objects, you can make dynamic and you can move them around and it won't affect your light bake as much. Uh, this is my, uh, using Quixel, they have different softwares. They have Bridge and Mixer. Mixer, you can mix textures. Bridge is the actual library that you use to pick your uh, assets to bring into whatever program you're using. In this case, I'm using Unreal, so I'm going from Quixel Bridge to Unreal. Um, Quixel Bridge is problematic at best, much like this HDMI cable. Uh, it has issues with getting the plugins and meshing well with other software. So if you're going from, uh, if you're on a PC or a Mac, you may have digital. Wow, it's gone. And now it's dead. Okay, anyway, so this was my asset library for creating that image. I have uh, about 50 assets, uh, decals, assets, 3D objects, um, straight from the Quixel library. So those are broken down into three uh, sub uh, themes here. We have surface textures, you have 3D assets, and then you have atlas, which is what Quixel calls, um, it's decals and scatter objects. So you can get plants, rocks, um, and smaller things that you may just want to paint in and kind of make things feel lived in. And I'll dive into decals in a little bit. Um, so for this scene, I initially blocked out the warehouse and the hallway was a main focus. So uh, the flooring and the walls and the ceiling are just made with Unreal um, uh, Polygon assets. And then the, uh, some of the brick walls in the background and the uh, support beams are actual Quixel assets. And I did use uh, Quixel textures for the ground and the, and the walls as well. Uh, and I'll, this just runs through me adding in more details. Um, a lot of this is just uh, 3D objects I just quickly placed around, and some of it is painted in. Um, within, quick, uh, within Unreal, they have a very good um, asset painting tool. So you load up your brush with physical objects, and then you can kind of just paint them around where you want them. It's very uh, nice for just building out, getting your ideas out virtually quickly. Uh, this is just a, this is stuff for my light bake. Uh, with no textures, and then there you have the textures, and also I have post-processing ele post -processing elements that are enabled on here. Uh, for the MoGraph Mondays uh, header, I dumped it into Substance Painter and just threw some basic textures on here. Uh, after I did this, I, was, I really wanted November to be more of a hot red iron kind of a texture, so within Unreal, I just simply plugged my uh, texture map into the uh, emiss of color uh, which is just this particular line right here. And you can't see that at all, so that's good. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what we're just looking at is, is this particular, man, that's terrible. Uh, this one right here. We're going right here for a miss of color. Anyways, so uh, after I had done the MoGraph Mondays uh, out of Substance Painter, there was some... Uh, I didn't do any of the UV mapping with it. I just took it straight from the uh, provided files and just dumped it into Substance Painter. And there was some UV issues that weren't lining up. So I, I threw some, some decals on, on there. The green boxes, when that pops back up, the green boxes are the decals. Uh, in Unreal, you use decals to break up your textures so you don't get repetitiveness all the time. You can use those to really bring to life your scenes. Uh, I really focused on that hallway more time than I, I should have. But you can see all those little pieces of white circles. Those are all decals. Um, I use those to break up the repetitiveness of my textures. There's a larger view of my entire scene with uh, uh, different elements that I had just started. Because I really wanted to, I hadn't been able to use the Quixel library. And I really wanted to explore what the, what the possibilities of using their assets was. So a lot of this is just experimental for me. Um, what I had mentioned before about um, Unreal enables you to have, uh, they give out free assets monthly. 
um, they change every month. So you want to get on there if you have if you're if you want to use Unreal at all, you want to get in there monthly and uh, add their those assets to your cart. Check out with them, and they'll be added to your library under the vault. And this is the collection of free assets that are on my um, that are on my uh, account. Uh, most of those are free, which is just a, a collection that I've been building up for the last two years. Um, I did use some fire elements to get this uh, to get the fire on the pallets over there. That was a free asset that I downloaded from Unreal, and it has the light system built into it, the effects built into it, and you just simply drag and drop that wherever you wherever you want to have some nice fire and smoke effects. And I just thought it kind of added a little something to it. But again, it was experimental for me figuring out what how this all works. Um, and yeah, so there's just a couple more shots of just different elements of what I had worked on. So, any questions? Yeah. Uh, so I'm an offline rendering uh, you know, dinosaur, as you call it. <laughs> uh, I followed a vendor a few months back in, in terms of delivering some of the data built on Unreal. And since I don't know about real time, uh, I'm usually a good person to ask. Um, is, there a, is there an effectively like max resolution that Unreal can help with? Uh, limitations of your computer, really. Okay. Um, I was told it can't do above 4K. Up and down. Uh, I mean, I, I've rendered out an 8,000 by 4,500 image, so. Right, yeah. uh, I mean, I think it's limitations of, of memory, RAM, or uh, I think it's limitations of your computer, as far as I'm aware. As I suspected. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it sounds like this information. <laughs> Some of you already support textures over 2K, and didn't support textures over 4K. That's probably where some of those limitations come from. They didn't have But even like eight years ago, They just didn't want to do it. Uh, not. <laughs> Thank you guys. Yeah, I have a question. Um, you mentioned like decals help kind of break up the repetitiveness mm -hmm. and kind of the, like what you're making to the scene. I guess I was curious how that worked uh, because like my understanding of decals is just that it's like pasting an image or something onto a surface. That no, um, so the uh, you have that green box is which where the texture is being applied. So this decal is actually this oil drip, um, and I use those sporadically around different areas um, to break up, like I said, just to add a little bit of more lift into it. Um, those can be moved around and, and used in a variety of ways. I also use them. Uh, it doesn't show up really well on, on here. Um, the ground is very, very repetitive, so I use the dirt texture to, to break that up as well as uh, a leaking kind of a decal up on the screen. Okay. Yeah. So um, this is great and everything, but what's forensic animation? What's forensic animation? Yeah. Uh, so I worked with a lot of lawyers and, uh, and doctors. They would give me their case file and say, make this into a 10 minute presentation for us. Uh, and then they would finish by saying, if you lose this case, it's your fault. So I just wanted to get out of that. Uh, I would pre create crime scenes, shooting scenarios for uh, uh, police shootings, car accidents. Like and you did all that in Unreal Engine? No, I did that in mine. Okay. Yeah. You used those to like that? Uh, in court? In court, yes. Yeah. I, I worked with a couple different expert uh, witnesses. They would testify on the authenticity of my demonstrative exhibit. Yeah. So you could make up for stuff really was in the roasting uh, That's what the experts would sign off on. They would, it would be their word in court. So um, I would never get the call to testify because I'm not an expert, but they would look over my work pre uh, beforehand, sign off on it, and agree to it, and then it would get submitted into the courts and filed as evidence. I think I, I missed something earlier. I think you said that AK image you rendered it in like 10 minutes or something? Uh, about, uh, about 10 seconds. Oh, 10 seconds. Yeah. You said, you said something you did a light bake or something? There's a light, light baking, um, which is you build your lighting system, you place your lights where you want them, and then it bakes the shadows and the ambient occlusion throughout the scene. Uh, and once it's baked onto the textures, that's a whole other system in Unreal. You used to have to make, when you used to do 3D modeling for games, you'd have to make your UV maps for your textures, and you'd have to make a UV map for your light maps. And those gets baked into the engine, and it draws on those instead of real-time rendering out lighting and bounces. And you said that 
Yeah. And you said it was like 10 hours or something? It took about 10 hours for this. The suit over that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then once it's done, you can move the camera around and, and you're free to run rewrite yourself up. Yeah. So, uh, was any of your Uh, I, yeah, a couple of them I had, a couple of them people uh, went to went to prison, yeah, there was a couple of shootings where they were found guilty, um, and I, there was a couple of SWAT cases where I was able to get a family who, their father was shot by a SWAT sniper, their family was awarded 14 million or something like that, so. I love how everyone's like, you had me at <laughs> uh, Yeah, on that same note, I also worked on the Oscar Pistorius case in South Africa, so. Yeah, that's their all main drop mic. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
like a frost covered block of ice to something that was like liquid and moving and that quickly fell apart. But uh, I ended up doing all of the storyboarding in Concepts app, which I highly recommend you check it out. Uh, the, three version, the free version gives you some options. Uh, if you want to make your own brushes, like I've, I've done, uh, then you end up having to pay for the pro version. But it's pretty capable. It's available for iPads. It's available for Windows computers and other tablets like that. Um, and so I just went through, did a lot of uh, storyboarding, just to kind of plan out like what kinds of assets uh, I was going to need to create. So that's, that's what the video did not turn into. <laughs> uh, so the texturing process was interesting. One of the challenges I was running into is that I really wanted a good frost texture. Uh, I played, I, <laughs> for all of these elements that I created for this, I redid them at least two to eight times each, which was ridiculous. But uh, for the texturing, especially for the frost, um, I wanted to find a way of building good frost patterns. Um, procedurally, obviously, would be my first preference, but um, I kind of, gave up on the geometry route because Svirchok nodes in Blender were kind of a nightmare to use. So having trouble with that. Um, so for Frost, I uh, of course then started going more towards the image-based route. Uh, the cool thing is you can find a lot of like Creative Commons and free-to-use textures, but none of them are tiled. And so I wanted to find a new way of creating a tiled texture. Um, and I, I've Presented in the past on how to use After Effects to generate tiled textures just by using either duplicated layers that randomize their position or by using a full particle system. Uh, that's something that I've presented on here at MoGraph Mondays before. Uh, in this case, I kind of wanted to go with something that was a little bit smarter and would actually kind of fit the particles together better. Because I didn't want to just overlay a bunch of random texture samples on top of each other. I really wanted something that felt like it fit together. Um, I tried some stuff, uh, even, I, ugh, I even tried GIMP, but <laughs> um, Texture Synthesis is a free library on GitHub that actually does a pretty uh, interesting job on some textures. Uh, this actually got me pretty close, but I wasn't terribly happy with like the photographic source. Um, so you can you can still see where there's some you know poor blending at some of the edges and stuff like that, but it actually tried to intelligently fit all of those pieces together and generate a tile level texture, which was nice. Um, however, uh, as I'm working in real-time 3D and working more and more with shaders, I use Shader Toy as kind of a reference a lot, uh, either as inspiration or just to make me you know, realize just how much I suck, because people have built entire flight sims in a single shader, which is insane. Uh, but the cool thing with Shader Toy is that sometimes you can find really cool art pieces. Uh, and in this case, I found Suture Fluid, which was kind of building these intertwining networks that would collide against each other and create uh, patterns that looked, to my eye, vaguely like they could be used for uh, frost. And then I kept watching it. It was like, wait a minute. It's repeating at the edges. It naturally tiles. Uh, and sure enough, it does. So uh, from Shader Toy, I was able to take the code uh, and use that in Vuo. Um, I'm part of the Vuo 2.0 beta. Uh, and I was able to uh, just use the shader code natively within Vuo. Uh, and then output, uh, I was able to modify the code. So instead of rendering the nice visuals that you see on Shader Toy, it actually gives me sort of like a pseudo UV map, or normal map rather, uh, where the red channel is kind of like a horizontal axis and the green channel is a vertical axis and then the, the blue channel kind of gives you the, the lines that are creating this pattern. Uh, and so that's actually what I ended up using for all of my uh, uh, textures for the ice patterns. Um, I also tried some stuff with like, uh, like caustic patterns and stuff like that. And I actually got some stuff rendered out and working and it was you know, all seamlessly tiled and everything. And then I ran into rendering issues. So speaking of rendering issues, uh, I did pretty much the entire project in terms of 3D in Blender. Uh, it's fairly well known. It's a free and open source 3D creation suite. Uh, and this was kind of my first actual project uh, using Blender. Uh, it was pretty interesting. Um, I would say after spending a month of troubleshooting and debugging issues constantly that at least I'm over the first hump. Uh, I'm a lot less intimidated by it now. And there are some nice things that I like about how they've set up the interface and things like that. Um, so yeah, uh, it was funny. I actually did uh, the Fluid Sims back in November when I was starting to think about doing this project. I had a little bit more time to plan on this one than I usually do. 
And I had some early successes with some uh, just really easy smoke simulations, uh, which gave me a false sense of confidence, which was then quickly destroyed. Um, I also used the AMD Pro Render, which is a free uh, CPU and GPU-based rendering engine. Um, all of the cool kids just were, you know, kept crapping on AMD, so they had to build their own render engine for anybody to be able to use their GPUs. Um, the interesting thing is it, it is actually completely cross-platform and works just fine on NVIDIA cards as well. So this is not limited. Uh, there are uh, plugins or integrations into pretty much all of the major 3D apps. Uh, fair word of warning, we use Moto for some of our real-time 3D modeling here at Vectorform because it deals pretty well with a lot of our polygon modeling. Uh, and unfortunately, the Pro Render uh, integration in that does not work. Just absolute garbage. Fatal crash at the same time. Uh, the cool thing is the plugin for Blender actually works way better. And it only got out of hand a little bit. <laughs> um, for animation and compositing, I, of course, did all of that in After Effects. Uh, and you know what that is. Uh, one, of the <laughs> curious, one of the curious things I ran into is that I wanted to do all of these 2D line animations. So it wasn't just like a 3D animation, um, but I wanted to add a lot of uh, like 2D elements as well. One of the challenges I ran into uh, is that I could very easily create an array of, li of radial lines and everything just using the, uh, the shape duplicator. The problem was I needed to randomize them, and I couldn't figure out how to do that. So if anybody can tell me how I can randomize the starting point of an array of lines in After Effects, please let me know. Because what I ended up doing is just creating an entire uh, expression system so I could control all of my layers from a single layer, and then I could you know, develop on one layer, figure out all of the controls that I wanted, and then just duplicate it 100 times, and then it gave me what I wanted, uh, which is silly, but a lot of this project was. So, um, The other thing that I uh, did was uh, I built a plugin in After Effects that would allow me to relight everything dynamically. Uh, and by relight, I mean not actually changing the lighting, but uh, changing the colors that everything was rendered with. Uh, you, might, you may have noticed that when I was rendering in Blender, it looked like this, which is, of course, not what it looks like in the end. But by rendering, because I was rendering uh, you know, all grayscale stuff, like I, I didn't need a lot of color. All of my color was coming from my lighting. So I didn't need the RGB channels in my render to actually do anything. So I could use them instead to separate all of my lighting passes. So what I did was I applied you know, self-illuminating materials to the background M, uh, and then I just set up flat panel geometry th through the rest of the scene in green and blue, and then that uh, allowed me to then separate all of those elements in post. Come on. There we go. Uh, so this is the red channel. Uh, here we have the green channel. This is kind of like my, my bigger fill. And then here's the blue channel, and this is kind of my accent color. And then so from here, in post-production in After Effects, I could then just very easily change all of my lighting colors. Uh, and there was... Uh, no issue with that. It was a lot of fun. Uh, and plus it, made, it means that I didn't have to make up my mind about what color scheme I wanted until the very end. So in terms of editing, um, I, I, I did all of my uh, own audio Foley effects for this one, which was interesting and not always successful. Uh, my cracking ice kind of sounds a little bit more like the Demogorgon, Demogorgon from a uh, popular Netflix show. But <laughs> for the most part, it was still a lot of fun. Uh, underwater effects work pretty well if you grab like a, a cutting mat and you just shake it next to the microphone. Um, I did all of my audio in Reaper, which is a di digital audio workstation. We use that here at Vectorform as well. The best thing, my favorite thing about Reaper is that it allows you to very easily output multiple audio files from a single project. So in my project, I just set up regions for the different sound effects that I'm working with. And then I can just mass render those out to any audio format that I want. So I can do all of my effects in Reaper. I can output to separate named files. Uh, and then in Premiere, I'm, I can just very easily put all of those pieces together. Uh, and then, of course, if I need to update an audio file, I can just go back to Reaper, re-render it out, overwrite the original file, everything updates in Premiere. Um, for the music, uh, I ended up just using uh, a track that I downloaded from Audioblocks uh, when I started like a free trial a number of years ago. Like I say in the slide, I can't exactly recommend the quality, but they periodically do like seven day free trials, just whatever you do, make sure that you cancel before it's over. Because they will charge you a credit card. 
Um, and the nice thing about audio blocks is that you can download. Now, granted, during the free trial, you get like 10 downloads a day or something. But if you have a subscription, you can download unlimited music and stuff from that site. Um, I almost did some cuts using audio tracks. Uh, audio is a slightly newer company. Uh, they have pretty standard licensing prices in terms of like, they're, they, they're very competitive with premium beat. It's about 50 bucks per track. Uh, however, they are offering a $200 lifetime membership, which I was tempted by, but thankfully I, I, I've held off so far that I will probably end up spending that money. <laughs> so this was one of the alternate takes that I did. As you can see, it's still watermark. <laughs> um, I also did one that was a little bit more high impact. Or it's done. Okay. <laughs> uh, so it was fun. I ended up doing about five different video edits and asked for help from friends and coworkers and everything to figure out which one I wanted to go with. Uh, so that's kind of, uh, yeah. That's how it all went together. Um, I do have uh, some of the resources that I use for this. Uh, so I'll be posting the link to the Facebook group. Uh, you'll be able to download the After Effects project that has all of the line animations. I didn't include anything else because the entire project is like 50 gigs. But um, So this at least has the line animations. You can tell me how I screwed things up. Uh, I do have the image that I use for all of my uh, lighting. So uh, it's pretty easy just to make a UV map that kind of captures a rectangle or a square. Uh, and then you can use this on self-illuminating illuminating geometry. Uh, it's not HDR, but you don't really need it. All you have to do is overcrank your values and you'll get there. Um, and then I included the suture fluid texture that I used as well. It's rendered out at 4K. And that's it. <laughs> so I, I did keep it to under 20 minutes, right? I think so. Yeah, okay, we're, we're good on time. Um, question. Actually, I have one. So you're at that line array that you're trying to figure out? Yeah. Yeah. Can't you randomize trim paths and shape uh, and, and not, uh, not and with a replicator? Or a not repeater? that I hear. Yeah. Oh, repeater. you're trying to use a repeater. Yeah. The repeater made it really easy, and then if I they're couldn't all randomize separate, it. If they're all separate layers and rotated, then you're like, Which is exactly what I did. Okay. Yeah. That mean, I, I wait. I, I long for the day I can teach John Einstein something. <laughs> You, you do all the time. Yeah, but it's not like no graph related. It's more. Like <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. uh, so I've seen you do this before, where it almost seems like the goal of the project is as much about researching different programs to try out and get new results. And yes, I. Is that something that you just do for the MoGraph Mondays banners, or have you found that you know you discovered a new pipeline or process that you can bring into your actual work? Uh, um, it, it's something that I do constantly. So whenever I'm faced with a problem, like the, the existing workflow may not be enough. Now, granted, I also get very stuck in my ways. Don't get me wrong. Um, like if, if I if I have a tool that works like a hammer, then everything's a nail. But at the same time, like if I'm faced with a problem and I can find another tool set that will make it easier for me, then that's really cool. Um, I don't have a good example right off the top of my head of something that I experimented with for banner and then I used in a client project. But uh, these these are a lot of the tool sets that I use just in my day to day job too. Um, like I. Uh, Vuo is hopefully eventually going to replace Apple's course composer because Apple sucks and they're killing everything that I love. Um, okay. So Vuo as a node-based visual programming environment allows me to do a lot of things that I can't do because I, I don't really want to program day in and day out. So I can do a little bit of code, but that's about it. Um, so a node-based visual programming environment makes it a lot more accessible for me, um, makes it a lot easier. Um, and it's actually the exact tool that I'm using in the lobby right now. So when you walk off the elevator, you see the vector form logo animating with like the text at the bottom and everything. Uh, that's all dynamically generated. It's all procedural animation. I feel all of that in the world. I, I don't know if that answers the question. Yeah, absolutely. What are some other issues? 
for Lord or is that just for like DJ and stuff? Yeah, Vuor, yeah, it's particularly popular with uh, video DJs. That sort of thing. Right. Uh, okay, so I did all of this in 2.81. In 2.80, they actually fixed that. Okay, the last thing is that you set it up, I just want to die. Yeah, yep, yep, likewise. Uh, yeah, 2.80 did make a lot of good improvements. Uh, when you set it up, you can immediately ask it to use industry standard shortcuts, which means that your WER keys work just like they do in Unity and other programs. Okay. Uh, so you have quick access to transform, rotate, scale, stuff like that. Uh, the downside being, of course, that everybody tries doing Blender tutorials online and they're using the default old style Blender shortcuts, and so you can't follow anything. It's a disaster. But and when you do convert, when you do switch to industry standard, or it's all hot, like other than the industry yeah. standard. Yeah. So, yeah. Go um, for Blender, you said you ran into a lot of bugs and stuff. Um, how did you overcome them? Like friends, support, or like forums? Beating my head against the wall until I didn't care anymore. <laughs> yeah. No one else can know he's a Blender, right? So now, yeah, what did you use to clean up the A lot of bleach. Yeah. Um, a lot of the bugs that I ran into were actually related to the AMD Pro render. Um, and one of the interesting things, for a bit, I kind of toyed with the idea of like using three different render engines for a video about three states of matter, which seemed to have a certain amount of technical poetry to it. Uh, and then I gave up. But <laughs> um, I did build like a lot of the shaders already in Blender Cycles, uh, which works pretty well. Um, but the downside being in Blender 2.80, uh, it supported uh, AMD GPU. So you could actually do GPU rendering using Blender Cycles. In 281, they removed all of that support. So they no longer support uh, GPUs in Mac OS because it eventually needs to be ported over to Metal, and instead of waiting, they just kill it. So that's always fun. Uh, but the biggest challenge I ran into with uh, the Cycles renderer is that it wasn't allowing me to mix multiple normal maps for different channels within the shader. So for example, like I wanted my reflections to be slightly perturbed, and I wanted my refractions to be deeply perturbed to kind of give the illusion and effect of a lot of like deeper detail within the ice, but still have a smooth surface. Uh, and the, the Blender Cycles render didn't allow me to do that. Now, I was able to do multiple shaders in Blender Cycles and then blend them together so I could kind of get close. Uh, but with the AMD Pro render, it gives me full control over like what normals I want to use for each pass of that shader. So if I want normals for you know subsurface scattering to be different than the normals that I'm using for reflection, you can do that. Um, and so that's why I ended up kind of just using the uh, AMD Pro Render engine for all of the ice and then for the water as well. Uh, and that's where I was running into just some really weird stuff. Uh, like you can choose object space normals when you're applying a normal map, but it won't work. Like it only uses tangent based normals. So a lot of the interface is there, but not everything is actually connected on the back end. Uh, so there's a lot of figuring out and finding some of the pitfalls of uh, the pro rendering. Uh, yeah, which was unfortunate. I ended up having to build my own uh, tri planar mapping, which was not good. <laughs> Speaking of being perturbed, uh, yes. so how do you feel over there? Um, overall, I want to keep using it as a tool set. I, I think it's a valuable tool. If it's free, there's no reason not to. Yeah. And in some ways, I would say it is certainly limited. Like, you, you start kind of figuring out some of the limitations. Uh, but for the like, following of the M in the logo, I was able to set up like booleans and noise displacements and then use uh, like multiple levels of polygon reduction to create a faceted look. And, it was all dynamic, so that was nice. Um, I, like I said earlier, uh, we use Modo, Sun, and Vectorform for just strict polygon modeling because it's a lot more reliable than Cinema. Uh, but the, the downside being that Modo's interface is a little bit more complex. Um, they do have a lot of dynamic modeling for procedural modeling tasks. All of the tool sets are very different than Blender, so if I can use both of them, I will. That is an all the tools. Any more questions? That's it. Sweet. Thanks. I'm
make fun of John Gardner like that a lot. Just your very unique workflow on things. You know. Yeah, you can clap for that.